welcome to the service this morning. The service is going to be a bit different. We'll get to the formal announcements and welcome just now. It's a family service, as you've seen, Chris and Brigitte have already sung for us a prelude. And the service, we just want to praise God, and the children will be in the front of it later on for the children's sermon, and then go out with Bettina, but we'll be back for Holy Communion. I ask you now to stand, and then we sing our first song. When you walk with the Lord. Sorry. It is the Spirit left to set us free, walk in the light of the Lord. So welcome to those streaming in live with us a bit later than usual this morning. And what a wonderful sunny day we have after all the rainy and cold weather over the last few days. I would just like to make the following announcements. Um, it's nice to be back from Eve again. Just, you'll have to excuse my voice. I have flu still, so I hope that the service will be audible. Then, I've just been asked to announce that the jumbled sale starts this week in Gunubi. Now, after church, when you're in the hall, sitting around your table, waiting for the hamburgers, just go a bit into the toilets of the hall, and you'll 
would see the big E of blessing that is lying there that needs to be carted to Ganubi. So we need help on Monday to cart all of that. If you're willing to assist, please speak to Bettina. And with the sales over the week, we need people to come in to just keep an eye over and assist in the store. If you can help for two or three hours, please speak to Vera. It is a fundraiser, it is a blessing, and if you look in the toilet, you'll want to see why it is a blessing. Then, our next services for next week Sunday are as follows. There's an 8.30 Divine English service here at St. Andrews. There's an 8.30 Divine English service in Kumcha. And then a 10.30 German service here at St. Andrews. And then we just want to think of the following people who are ill on the prayer list. Sylvia Kretzmann, Ruth Lenz, and Lorraine Roman, who's also here in service today. Glad to see you here, Lorraine, after you've been ill for some time. Dear friends, today in this service, the theme, the focus is one in Christ, God's family. And what that means, we want to discover together in the service. There's some familiar parts in the service, some parts have shifted around, so that's why it's an informal service. So I ask that you follow on the overhead, and please remain seated, let us speak as we have, and I ask you to answer with part all. In Jesus Christ, we are children of God through faith. We belong to one family, bound together by His love. There is neither Jew nor Greek, neither slave nor free, neither male nor female. For we are all one in Christ Jesus, united in faith and grace. As we gather, let us remember that we come as brothers and sisters, one in Christ. We come with open hearts, ready to embrace our shared identity, in Christ's We celebrate this service in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may remain seated. Let us pray. Loving and gracious Father, today we are gathered here as your children. You have called us together here. We thank you for the gift of family in our personal lives, our church family, and the family of believers across the world. You have called us together from different backgrounds, different experiences, different walks of life, and made us one in your Son, in whom there are no divisions, for we are all in one. Help us to live out this truth. Embrace one another in love and celebrate this beautiful diversity in your creation. You have gathered us here together this morning through your spirit. May your spirit remind us that you love us, that we belong to you, but that we also belong to one another. May your spirit open our hearts to your presence and let our time together this morning be a reflection of unity and peace that's found in your kingdom. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may remain seated. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 138. And I ask that the men speak with me and that the women answer with the gold printed part and the W. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise.
Will the children come to the front, please? And today you can sit here in the semicircle here in front of me. So children, what am I holding in my hands this morning? A puzzle piece. And are all the puzzle pieces the same? Not. As you can see, the puzzle pieces come in different shapes and sizes. And together they form a beautiful picture. Can I ask you quickly, one or two of you, to quickly build that puzzle and then build it in here, then you can show you to the grown-ups what it is for adults. So what's on the picture, children? What? A train. So if you can see adults, it's a bit way in the front, but it's a little train that this puzzle formed. So children, when we put this puzzle together, it formed a beautiful little picture. Did you know that we are also like puzzle pieces? I want to read the Bible passage for you. You're all baptized in Christ, so you were clothed with Christ. This shows us that you're all children of God through Jesus Christ. Now in Christ, there's no different. There's no difference between Greek and Jew, no difference between slave and free man, no difference between male and female. We are all one in Jesus. We belong to him. So what this Bible passage tells us is that we are all one in Christ. We are children of God. Just like the puzzle pieces are different, we might be different, but we all belong to God's family. We become part of God's family, and together we make something beautiful. So no matter who you are, no matter how different we seem, we all belong to this family. Even the adults here at the back are your brothers and sisters. They are there to help you and guide you. We all belong to God, our Father. Let us pray. Let us bow our heads and let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for making us part of your family. Help us to remember, even though that we are different, we are loved by you. Thank you for fitting us together to make something beautiful. Lisa, all children, you can now go with Katina. Lisa, can I ask you to take the puzzle? And who wants to take the candle? They will get the visitors to go. One of the girls take the candle. Thank you, you can take it. You need to go And dear congregation, you can stand and let us sing our next hymn when we walk with the Lord.
be seated. Let us bow our heads, let us pray. Gracious and loving Father, we gather here in your presence today as your children, young and old, from every stage of life, united in the name of your Son. We are one in family, one in body, made whole by your grace alone. As we now prepare to hear your word, Lord, we ask for your presence to still our hearts, to open our minds so that we may hear to your message. Prepare us now, Lord, to receive your word. May it shape our lives, fill our hearts, and lead us closer to you. May your word spoken today bear fruits in our lives as we go forth to love and serve in your name. Amen. Next slide. So dear fellow brothers and sisters, Today we're going to talk about clothes, what we wear, what is in your cupboard at home. Because after all, the saying goes in English, clothes makes the person. The first thing a person notices of us is when they see is what we are wearing. Clothes act as a visual statement, revealing something of us of who we are. It plays an important role in our lives, shaping how others see us, how others and how we feel about ourselves. For instance, you recognize a doctor if he wears a white lab coat. You recognize a police officer wearing a uniform. If you go to sports, you notice that the staff working there belong there because they are also wearing a uniform with spa written on it. Sometimes we also dress ourselves to hide a part of ourselves, wearing dark clothes to blend in, or wearing baggy clothes because we maybe don't feel so confident about ourselves. And sometimes we go into our clothes cupboard and we take out that favourite sweater we put it on so that we feel comfortable. It relaxes us. It makes us feel more at ease, ready for the day. Sometimes, when a loved one dies, we also keep a special piece of clothing back from that person to remind us of them. In other words, clothes don't only show our identity, but clothes also offers comfort, and sometimes it also conceals what we want to hide. So indeed, the saying then is true, clothes makes a person. And that brings us to our sermon text today. Today, Paul in our sermon text speaks of clothes that we are given to wear, to dress ourselves in every day, new clothes that makes a huge difference in our lives. Let us now hear our sermon text as it is written in Galatians chapter 3 verse 26 to 29 and this morning I read out of the New Living Bible Translation. For you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. And all who have been united in Christ in baptism have put on Christ like putting on new clothes. There is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male or female. You are all one in Christ Jesus. And now that you belong to Christ, you are two true children of Abraham. You are his heirs. And God's promise to Abraham also belongs to you. Till here, our sermon text. 
Paul really encourages us this morning that through Jesus Christ we have been given a new set of clothing that we are to wear. It is brand new. And if we take a closer look at it inside, there's a special tag with care instructions that are sewn into it. And Paul tells us, these are clothes that you don't only wear once a week, but you are to wear them every day of your life. They are like work clothes. Nothing is as as exciting as putting on a new pair of shoes or new jeans that you have been given or that you have bought. See, if we dress in something new, it kind of makes us feel special and it gives us a sense of confidence as well. So in a much, much deeper way, God has also given us new clothes to wear. God encourages us through these words to put on Christ. We could never afford this piece of clothing that God is offering to us on our own. We receive it by God's grace, by God's love alone. God, on that day when you were baptized, gifted you through your baptism with this piece of clothing and he dressed you himself on that day when you were baptized. Through putting on Christ then, we are given a new special identity. In other words, we are no longer defined by our past mistakes, by our failures, or even by our successes in life. We are only defined now by Christ's love. Through Jesus' death on the cross, he, like a piece of clothing, covers our old identity. Through the clothes of Jesus that we are put on, we have become a new creation in Jesus. The new clothes that we are given signifies a profound change in our life. There's a transformation where the old self is left behind us and the new self that we are given in Christ is defined by Christ's love, by his grace, by his humility, by his forgiveness. As we wear Christ, his love, his compassion and humility, we become what the world sees in us. It is not just a change in how we are viewed, rather it is a complete mind shift of how we live, how we think, how we act. Our new identity in Christ remains a gift alone. Sorry, and if you can go back to point two. Okay. Every time you buy or receive a piece of clothing, you should actually go in and look for that little tag that is sewn in that is sometimes a bit annoying, that scratches. Because in your piece of clothing, this little tag reminds us how to take care of this piece of clothing, of that tag that is sewn in there, whether it needs to be washed gently, whether it can be tumble dried, whether it can be ironed. Without this information, this piece of clothing would be damaged and worn out prematurely. In a much deeper way, the same is also true for us as children of God. Just like a garment tag identifies its material and hair instructions, so God identifies us who we are and how God cares for us. Galatians 3.26 reminds us of our identity as a child of God. God reminds us as children that Jesus has washed away all our sins. 
God reminds us personally as his children when we go through the tumbles of life, times of hardship, times of stress, times of uncertainty, we can trust that God is in control. In those moments when life leaves us wrinkled or creased by struggles, God, like a gentle hand with an iron, smooths out those rough patches for us, restoring us and helping us moving forward along the way. That little piece of a tag that is sewn into clothing reminds us that God tenderly cares for us as his children, shaping and nurturing us into the people he has called us to be. Our identity in him assures us that no matter what life throws at us, God's love and guidance are constant, ensuring that we remain his beloved children. And that brings us to the next point. Work clothes often represents a person's role, like a chef in the kitchen, a construction worker on site. And the clothes that they wear need to be comfortable and suitable for the work that they are doing. God has also clothed us, his children, in the right, comfortable work clothes that we need in our life to be able to do the task that God has given us of unity and service in his kingdom. And Paul encourages us to work, to wear our work clothes on a daily basis. Yes, sitting here this morning, we all come from different backgrounds. We all have our unique quirks, we all have our unique personalities, we all have different life experiences. And often these can lead to tension. But God reminds us always to pause and to look for his love and look up to him because he is our common ground that unites us together. Seeing our differences as a blessing, making by making his family diverse and colourful, filled with unique gifts and talents. So let us cling to that, that our differences are colourful. They are a blessing that God has given us because we all have a unique role to play in God's kingdom. The church, which is nothing else in God's family, should be a place where all are welcomed, valued, loved, and as a part of God's family, working together, we work towards the goal that God has in mind of unity and serving one another and people around us where God has placed us. Dear friends, in Christ in conclusion, as we have seen today, clothes play an important role in shaping how we present ourselves to the world and in a much deeper sense also the image of clothes serves as a powerful metaphor of our new life in Christ. Just as putting on a new outfit gives us confidence, putting on Christ gives us a new identity, one rooted always in grace, love and forgiveness. Through our baptism, we have been clothed with Christ, and that changes everything. These new clothes are not just for show, but they are practical, like work clothes, designed for tasks at hand. God has equipped you, has equipped me, and given us the right garments for his work in his kingdom, reminding us that we are part of something bigger, God's family. As we go out into the world, let us remember that we are clothed in Christ. His love is what others should see in us. And his work is what we are called to do, to serve him and the world around us. In Christ we are one. One family, one body working together in unity for God's kingdom. 
Therefore, let us embrace our identity, celebrate our differences, and to live out our calling as members of God's family, united in Christ. Amen. I ask that you remain seated. We now want to sing our next hymn, There Are Many Ways of Sharing. <coughs> celebrate Holy Communion, another sign that God gives us for unity. 
and that we belong to one family. It is important that we remember as God's children that this table of our Lord does not belong to any domination, church or community. Rather, it belongs to Jesus Christ himself. It was at a table, after all, that our Lord met people, that he heard and listened to their stories, but also shared his story. It was at his table that he deepened his friendship with all sorts of people, with poor people, with prostitutes, with those deemed as nothing, with a business class, with the prophets, and with the priests, and with the puzzled bystanders. It is at the table of Jesus that he shared his profound insight of who God really is and what God wants. It is at the table with bread and wine that he initiated the sacrament we now are going to celebrate. So come to this table as we are one in Christ, regardless of our background, regardless of our status, regardless of what we have done, because Christ equally loves us just as we are. Come, let us pray and praise God. Great and almighty Father, of all the things you have created, we take the simplest foods and find you among us as we eat together. In the great story of Jesus Christ, your Son, we hear your love for us, being retold as we remember all that Jesus has done for us because of that love. Through the Spirit, you set this bread and wine apart to be used as an image of you and your love for us. For this gift of bread and wine that reminds us of all the other gifts that you've given us. We thank you that you've called us your children, sharing with us a love that is more powerful than the universe and that you are present with us, wanting to bless us through this bread and wine. And we remember that night when Jesus shared his final meal with his friends. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, he took the bread, when he gave him thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, Jesus took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of new covenant which is shed for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of our Lord now be with you. Come to the table of the Lord just as you are, because everything is ready. You may be seated, right or usher you to the throne.
Let us stand and let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks that in this meal that you've reminded us of our unity in Christ and in one another. As we have shared his body and blood, we are strengthened to live as your family, welcoming, loving and serving others in his name. Heavenly Father, we come before you today united as your children and clothed in the love of Christ. Thank you for the gift of new clothes, for clothing us with grace, forgiveness and a new identity. Help us always to remember that we are no longer defined by our past, but by your love. Lord, we pray for your church, your family here on earth. May we reflect unity, welcoming all in open arms, regardless of background or status, helping us to embrace our differences as gifts, using our unique talents to serve one another in love. May your love be the common ground that binds us together, we lift up those in need, those facing hardship, illness or loneliness. Clothe them with your peace, comfort and healing. Guide us, Lord, to be your hands and feet. Reach out in love and care to those around us. We pray for the work of your kingdom. You have given us work to do in your kingdom. Equip us daily with the strength, the wisdom to carry out our roles of faithfulness and joy. Knowing that in Christ we are one family working together for your glory. Cross the night. We pray. Amen. Receive now the blessing of God. May God, who called you his child through faith in Christ, bless you with assurance of your identity in him. May you wear the love and grace of Christ like new clothes, knowing that you are ever united with him. May the Spirit strengthen you to live in unity with all people for Christ. In Christ there is no distinction. You are one in Him. Go in peace as hairs of a promise clothed of Christ to reflect His love in the world. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us remain standing for our last hymn. Just before we sing our last hymn, just a reminder that we We'll have some time of fellowship in the hall now. Those who want to join us, you're going to have build your own hamburger. As we've all been in the church, there will be a time when we have to wait when everything is ready. So please enjoy the time to chat with one another and the lunch will follow in due course. Let us end the service with May we may the feet of God.